The Amazon really has a hold on me. And the communities out here, the indigenous people, are really the caretakers of the Amazon. So hopefully by taking care of these people, taking care of their health, we're also in the long run taking care of this environment. The Amazon is very difficult to live in. Every day for the people that live in these isolated communities is a struggle just to get food. And they depend on the NGOs, such as Amazon Promise, to come in and give them medical attention. Health is such an important, huge issue. I mean, it's the most important, you know. Health is the most important. You can, education is up there, but if you're not healthy, you can't study, you can't educate yourself or be educated if you're not healthy. I was a jungle guide on the rivers and the villages, bringing adventure tourists through. More and more, I started seeing how people were very sick, and then I wasn't able to help them very much. People would kind of sit around my mosquito and wait for me to wake up so they could ask me for medicines. And uh, at one point, I had to give stitches. It was kind of like, you know, this is kind of getting scary. People were counting on me for their medical care and I just realized that I was gonna have to do something more than just bring tourists through the trade for their artisania, their crafts. So little by little, I was able to get people together involved that were interested. You know, we were able to help people very easily with very little at the beginning. That's how it started. So it became a formal uh, nonprofit in the States in 1993. The next two weeks, we will be going from village to village on uh, the Amazon Promise medical mission. And sorting through all the gear, I realized what a big logistical job this kind of mission is. These communities are far from what we consider civilization. Getting there is, in and of itself, an expedition. Wararai is one of the more remote places that we're going to be. The last time that Amazon Promise was here was three years ago, but they remember Patty very well, and we were very welcomed into the village. The health stations that we set up, we just ask them what their ailments are, and then the doctors do a diagnosis and um, treatment. A lot of times something for parasites, diarrhea, quite a lot of anemia, so we're doling out a lot of iron and a lot of anti-parasitics. It is a wonderful experience to be out here. It is completely isolated and primitive. They live a really harsh life. I mean, their days are spent hunting and making sure that they have shelter and caring for their young. An absolutely incredible experience. Very traditional culture, very intense family community. The kind of experience that I came here for. Every day is definitely another adventure out there. You know, every, every day is like a book, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And, and... They are here. See? We had a girl who had a splinter in her foot, and um, she needed to be operated. We improvised a little bench outside. as a little operating table. There was a huge audience, all her friends. She was very brave. She was in a lot of pain, but um, she would not move. She screamed, but she would not move. Then she just stood up and looked around. She was very proud of herself, and we were proud of her too. In the community of Wagramona, we saw a nine-month-old little girl, Rebecca. And when she arrived, she was definitely not getting enough oxygen with 103 degree fever. 103.8. Remember, I was standing there watching, going up, 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 up. It was unbelievable. With pneumonia and was malnourished. And I think if we hadn't been there in two days, she probably would have died. You can just imagine that that's just one case of so many. And that's the reality out here. But it's nice to be a part of this medical team and do something tangible to help the people in this area. I didn't expect to have such a great, um, cohesive group of, of practitioners. I felt like we learned from one another. The American physicians had things to show, the Peruvian physicians, and vice versa. 
I think that's the strength of Amazon Promise is the blend of you know people from many different backgrounds. That's such a huge part of this organization. Are our volunteers, our dedicated volunteers. Without the volunteers, we can't do anything. And when you see other people that, that do get involved, that's very inspiring to me. We are getting to a lot more people, seeing a lot more patients, regardless of whether it's getting to one person or 30 people or 300 people. That's what keeps me going, you know, getting to the remote areas where people have no medical care whatsoever. We have the HIV education program that Elena is doing and really making big differences there and also providing programs that will help them in training village health care workers, which we've, we've been doing little by little. For small organization, you know, we have very dedicated people that are getting a lot of work done. Yeah, there is a lot more to do. We have plans to build a clinic in the slum area of Belain, which is one of the most destitute areas I've ever seen. You know, I would love to have a constant presence in these areas. We need, you know, we need more donations, we need more resources to be able to get there, and we can do it. I knew coming here, this was going to be an intense experience, and I was right about that. Not just physically, but also emotionally. It's really hard to see a lot of people suffering. We go out there for a day and give them medical attention, but there's still so much more to do. Chronic ailments, and what we're doing is coming in and giving temporary relief. It's a hard emotion to handle knowing that we're helping, but also knowing that we're just scratching the surface with this kind of project. But to see other people, to see our own human species taking care of our own, really is rewarding. Hey!